You're all right. Everything is fine. What do you mean, what with us? Your own daughter could have been killed tonight. How many more lives are you going to risk? Plastic explosives here. I'll set that one myself. You haven't got one shred of evidence. What did you say? I can't hear you. Complex. What could be more important than murder? Mass murder. But don't let her get in the car. you got to stop her. There could be a bomb in it. Don't let her turn the key on. His lordship's on a very tight schedule. How long will you be staying in New York this trip? Lord Bridges will be residing at his Long Island estate for the entire summer. After attending as many parties and consuming as much American bourbon as indulgence and inebriation allows. Will you be taking photographs for your coming exhibit? Oh, without question. After all, even British royalty has to earn some of your American dollars to keep our castle central heated and our horses well fed. Lord, the car is waiting. In view of the current economic austerity in England, don't you find it a waste of the taxpayers' money to maintain the British royalty? My dear lady, let me tell you this. Tradition in our country is a very precious commodity. You're hoping this will be a profitable trip for you. <laughs> they always are. Now, Fletcher. On your heels, my lord. Furthermore, the Montague estate has been hit three times in the last six months. We still haven't recovered Mrs. Montague's diamond tiara from the first job. The woman calls me every morning to ask for progress. Now, we're going to cover every party at every estate till we make some arrests. You uh, men are dressed like this so as not to attract attention. These uh, affairs you'll be attending are costume parties. What's McLeod going as? <laughs> Himself. <laughs> oh, God. It's all I had left. I think, um, I think I'll pair you with uh, McLeod. You two cover the Keaton place. All right, the rest of you have your assignments. Now, be inconspicuous, but be there. That's all, man. Dismissed. Then. I've got them. This is a pretty ambitious setup. For the munitions you listed, you'd have needed a convoy of trucks. <laughs> I've tailored your requirements. Everything you're going to need will fit into two suitcases. Some plastic explosives with an RDX base, number eight electrical blasting caps, and Veltex 448s. I've marked the correct positions on the blueprints for maximum effects. But I'm afraid the whole package is going to cost you more money. How much more? $50,000. <laughs> it's out of the question. We can't raise that kind of cash in time. Now we're fighting for a principle, Keaton. Have you no shame? I deal in arms, not causes or principles. I took the trouble of listing the names of everyone involved on a portion of the blueprints. I like to remember who I'm dealing with. Oh, you recall our first meeting in London? Now, this is a photograph I managed to take of it. I'm sure you'll recognize the players. Are you out of your mind, man? 
carrying around a photo like that, you can get us all put in jail. I'll see you tomorrow morning for my fee. You'll get your blueprints and specifications then. I may hold on to the negatives of those. Just for the time being. Good night, gentlemen. Mr. Keaton. They've got to be at his home. I think we'll have to pay Mr. Keaton a little visit tonight. But he's having some sort of a costume party there. Ah, good. We'll crash it then. I think he's talking to your den mother. Love your costume, darling. Bridges, I saw you giving away cameras on a television show. <laughs> that was Lord Olivia. And what do you do? I take photographs with his cameras. And may I say how beautiful you're both looking this evening. Uh, what are you here at? As Betsy Ross. Sensible. Exquisite <gasps> diamonds. Would it be too bold if I asked how many there were in each necklace? There are 18, and there are 54 in the tiaras. There are 60 in mine, Emily. 60, Martha. Then you must be wearing mine. <laughs> I shouldn't fight about it, ladies. An Avalon emerald. There have only been a few dozen of those mined in South Africa since, I believe, 1948. Really quite beautiful. You're quite an authority. Just a hobby. My friend, you made it. Come on, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Ladies. Ta-ta. Chris, I'd like to introduce you to Lord Bridges. <laughs> that won't be necessary. Oh, dear Chris, how wonderful it is to see you. I had no idea you were back in New York. I had no idea you two were such old friends. Uh, Chris covers all my parties for her newspaper. Miss Coughlin and I met in London many years ago. Not so many years. Would you excuse me for a minute? Of course. Sam! Chris? Hmm. What are you doing here? I didn't expect you tonight. Listen, don't let this get out, but I'm, I'm on duty. Supposed to be protecting your host and his guests. I, uh, I guess I've got some explaining to do, don't I? About what? Well, the scene you witnessed over there. I didn't see anything there tonight to put a burr in Miss Adeline. I'm sorry. I forgot who I was talking to. Implacable McLeod, the plainsman. The marshal who stands tall and alone. You don't have a jealous bone in your body, do you? Join the party? Huh. Thank you.
Ah, Mr. Keith, you certainly know how to throw a party. What do you want? Everything you've got right now. Get out of here. Mr. Clayton has a gun. Point it directly at the small of your back. He wouldn't use it in here. Ah. The music is so loud, and the gun is silenced. You had a few too many drinks, and your friends helped you outside. Would you like to try? All right. Come with me. Get my keys. You kill me, Garland, and you'll be cutting off your source. Indeed. We can always find another one like you. Now, I want those blueprints and the negative of the photo and the list of names, and hurry up. I reduced them all to micro photography. It's here in the safe. What? The film's got to be in there. Now give it here. Ah, you... No! No! You idiot! I need him alive! He grabbed hold of the pistol. Let's get out of here. Would you like a costume? I'd still like another drink. Why aren't you in a costume? I'm wearing a costume, can't you see? Oh, but I... It's dumb. No, I, 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 it's terrific. I designed it myself. Well, oh. <laughs> what? What's this? God, it looks like. Oh! Oh! oh my God! Help! <gasps> Somebody may help me. Help! Take Mrs. Keaton out of here and call the police. You seal off the grounds. I'm sealing the house. Stop. Please, just stop. Just hold it right there. Please. Do you mind turning that pistol another Just direction? put your hands up against the wall, spread your feet. Well, I realize this is routine American police procedure, but might I ask what I owe the honor? What are you doing there? I might ask the very same question of you, and in case you don't know, there has been a murder. Well, there's been a murder. Let's go. Joe! Door's locked. How'd you get out here? My dear fellow, I came out from the other side of the house in hopes of stopping whoever was escaping. 
And you might explain that gun to me. Marshal McLeod. Hmm. Well, I must admit the badge does go along with the six shooter and the outfit. It's for real. Let's go. You're not my immediate thought as a New York policeman. You arrested Lord Bridges? Chief, I found him just outside Keaton's bedroom window. Now, he said he came around the side of the house. Well, I didn't see him. Then he came around the other side of the house. Chief, I don't know how he got out of the house. I sealed it off two minutes after the body was well, discovered. Well, even if he had, he had to pass a lot of guests. I questioned him. Nobody saw him. Then you missed him in the dark. Bridges says he was out looking for the murderer when a cowboy with a six-shooter came after him. Did he have a gun? No. Then what would be the motive? Certainly not robbery. He's got an estate in Buckinghamshire the size of Manhattan. Might have a debt just as big. Economically speaking, that's quite close to the truth, Marshal. However, the country isn't quite that bankrupt yet. Traditionally, Englishmen have a way of uh, uniting under adversity. I, uh, I'd like to apologize for this evening. Uh, Marshal McLeod here didn't know who you were. Oh, I quite understand. As a matter of point, the Marshal uh, frisked me for a gun. Would you care to search me, too? I don't think that'll be necessary. I'm very grateful for your cooperation. Oh, pleasure. I must say you do move fast, Marshal. You took me totally by surprise. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, may I? Thank you. I really should have told you who I was immediately. I hope there are no hard feelings. No, no, not at all. Gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I'll see what I can do to comfort Alice Keaton. Sergeant, Chief. You know, Chief, uh, sometimes when you rope a calf, it, uh, it takes you by surprise and almost jerks you right out of the saddle. It'll leave a, a rope burn right across the palm of your hand. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. But the next time I'm in a rodeo, I'll try and keep it in mind. Bridges' hand was raw. What does that prove? Well, anybody trying to climb down from Keaton's bedroom window using one of those trailing vines could have gotten a rope burn. That's speculation. It sure answers the question of how he got around that side of the house without anybody seeing him. You realize this could have caused an international incident with my department right in the middle. He's letting us off the hook. That doesn't change the facts none. The facts are you haven't got one shred of evidence implicating Bridges with the robbery and murder of an old friend. Now, this little mistake tonight will be our secret. Is that clear? Couldn't be clearer. Good. I'm Charles Bridges. Ah, I'm Jack Garland. And this is uh, my associate, Mr. Clayton. Uh, delighted. I represent the Chasen Insurance Company. Uh, we've got a substantial investment in Mrs. Caton's jewelry collection. Now, I understand from the police department that indeed there was a robbery there last night. That's quite a story. Yes, the Times at London thought so. Matter of fact, they cleared the front page for it. Ah, well, that's exactly why I've come to talk to you. My colleague and I are most anxious to get any leads at all that'll help us track down the missing gems. One gem in particular, an emerald ring. Now, my employer has authorized me to make a very generous offer for its return. And how much would that be? 
$50,000. Oh, Mr. Garland, I've had the privilege of seeing Mrs. Keaton's jewelry on a number of occasions. The ring isn't worth 20. Ah, well, it is to us. So if you've seen anything at all that'll help us recover the ring, you can get in touch with me by the number on that card. You call me by six o'clock tonight, please. Oh, forgive me, uh, Miss Chris Coffin, Mr. Garland, Mr. Clayton. Ah, it's a pleasure, miss. So six o'clock it is then. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My lord. Who are those men? Oh, some business associates. I thought we agreed that this minor piece of newspaper history would be our secret. What do you do? Carry a resident photographer around with you to catch the more exciting moments? Well, I didn't figure it'd come to this. Why not? It's a wonderful story. New Mexican deputy marshal arrests a British lord of the realm. Why, it's got style. Something Gee. to catch the eye. And it's exclusive. The one paper to carry this is the one Chris Coughlin works for. Well, Chief, I can appreciate that, but if you'll just listen to the me official for The official police statement is that Lord Bridges was never under arrest. He was merely, to use that euphemistic English phrase, helping us with our inquiries. The Times of London wants to know if we arrest all of our witnesses to make sure they don't get away. So far today, I've had to placate the commissioner, apologize to the English consul. Before the morning's out, I'll probably have to sign a loyalty oath to the Queen. Chief, did you have an expert examine the jewels and keep them safe? Yes, we did. Well, what did he find? Paste. Well, there you go. Now, if you'll just give me a search warrant, I'll prove to you the bridge is committed to robbery. McLeod, yep. that is out of the question. I don't need to add to the department's embarrassment by having an English lord file a complaint against NYPD for harassment. But, Chief, I... Bridges is to be left alone. That comes from the top. There's one more thing. He's ordered me to take you off the case. That's all, McLeod. I'm not sure what I'm suggesting. Well, let me help you, Chris. That I'm a thief and a murderer, and that your Marshal McLeod was right. I wouldn't be here if I believed that. Chris, I need to trust someone. And I can think of no one with more integrity or compassion than yourself. Reporters are supposed to uh, never reveal their confidential sources. I also understand that uh, some of your fellow journalists have even gone to jail before doing so. That's right. Are you that committed? Of course. Anything you, you say to me is in the strictest confidence. I did not kill Johnny Keaton, and Chris, you must believe that. However, I did stumble upon something on his possession. What it is, I'm not really sure. I'd like very much for you to find out all you can about him. What's all this about? I'm hoping you're going to help me find out. Were you in the bedroom when he was killed? I was there. Who killed him? That I can't tell you. Chris, many people's lives may depend upon your integrity. Chris, I'm asking you to trust me. Please believe that I am not capable of murder. I'll get back here as soon as I can. Thanks, dear. You're uh, responsible for that, ain't you? Sam, that's not my byline. Well, you sure made sure that it was printed. Well, I thought it'd brighten up the page. <laughs> you know, Chris, uh, you and I are going to have to do some talking about this Lord Bridges. <laughs> Last night, you weren't even interested. I'm interested. Just how much do you know him? We're old friends. I met him when I was on special assignment in London, and we shared some memories. But I have not seen him for five years before last night. You talked to him today? Of course not. He didn't come to New York to see me. Chris, I have that information you needed for Lord Bridges. Shall I bring it in now? Talk to you later, Bill. Chris? 
think you just better flat out tell me what's going on here. Sam, Charles Bridges is not a murderer. I caught him underneath Keaton's window last night. His hand was raw from climbing down the vine. Just because he was in Keaton's bedroom doesn't mean he pulled the trigger. Now, you know something that you're not telling me, don't you? Was he in the room or not? Did somebody else pull the trigger or what? I can't tell you that. What do you mean you can't tell me that? It was reported to me in confidence. He told me as a reporter, not as a friend. I'm not going to reveal... Chris, we're talking me. about murder. Now, if you know anything at all about what happened in that room last night, it's your duty as a citizen to tell me. It's my duty as a journalist not to tell you. Hmm. He's using you. You realize that? You can't see that? He's using you? Maybe you got too much uh, stardust in your eyes. Sam, he's in trouble. What trouble? You can't arrest him, you can't question him, you can't touch him. He's into something he doesn't understand. Chris, as far as I'm concerned, Lord Bridges is a prime suspect in a murder. Now, if I can't get the information out of you, I'm going to squeeze it out of little Lord Fauntleroy. Where's Bridges? He didn't show. Chris Coughlin's a reporter. She's been checking up on John Keaton. But did you get an address on her? Sure, I got an address on her. She's so pretty. Well, it looks like you'll have to pay her a visit then. What about Bridges? Oh, I'll take care of him. Go on. I received a telegram this afternoon from my estate. My family has considerable stakes in British Leyland, and uh, the stockholders have pushed the meeting to Monday. I don't believe it. Chris, you cannot be involved in this any further. You've done as much as you can. I must do the rest myself. And I can't do that while I'm here. Please trust me. I promise I'll explain everything over dinner at Orsini's when I return. Charles, I... My flight leaves in two hours. I must ring off. Take care of yourself. Planning a little trip, my lord. You've got something we want, and we're here to take it. I'm afraid I can't help you. I think you can. We've wired up a little surprise for your newspaper friend. Now, you're going to give us what we want, or she's going to be a very dead lady. It's your move, sir. That? I want him alive! Come on back to the car! Marshal! Those men, they've planted a bomb. They're going to kill Chris Coffin. Oh, you know what you're talking about? I am only telling you what they've just told me. Who were they? I haven't the faintest idea. This is Marshal Sam McLeod, a black Continental sedan just pulled out of an estate on Long Island, Claremore Street. The men in it are armed and dangerous. Apprehend. Roger, Marshal. Now pass me through to 5550392. Chris Coughlin's desk. Is Chris there? This is Sam McLeod. I am, Marshal. You just missed her. She's on her way downstairs. Well, don't let her get in the car. You've got to stop her. There could be a bomb in it. <laughs> Don't let her turn the key on. She just pulled away. 
Hey, Marshal, what's going on? Where'd you go? Home, I think. Much obliged. Now give me the bomb disposal squad. This is an emergency. spoke to the doctor. He says that you're a very lucky lady. You're going to come through this with flying colors. Feel numb all over. Body feels as if all the blood and life's been drained out and all that's left is this shell that's just crackling into a thousand tiny pieces. Ooh. I think maybe that writer's imagination of yours kind of got the best of you, hasn't it? What happened? Somebody tried to kill you. Now, don't you think it's about time that you told me what this is all about? Can't do that, Sam. Chris, now we're talking about your life. That's something that's very important to me. And it's still in danger. Those two men that tried to blow you apart tonight, whoever they are, there's nothing that says that they won't try it again unless they're stopped. Well, I can't stop them unless you tell me what this is all about. Can't tell you. Well, Chris, you sure got a lot of Missouri mule in you. And I'll get it out of Lord Bridges. He doesn't happen to have any journalist immunity. What time is it? It's 9.30. Too late. He'll be on a plane to London in half an hour. London? Miss, a martini, please. Very, very dry. Thank you, Fletcher. Oh, no. Don't tell me, let me guess. It's none other than Marshal McLeod. I must say, I never thought you'd track me all the way to London. I just left Chris. She's hurt pretty bad, but she's going to make it. Yes, I know. I rang the hospital from the airport. Marshal, I had nothing to do with the attempt on her life, and you must believe me. You're going to have to do a whole lot of talking before I believe anything that you say. And I did not kill Johnny Keaton. You have my word on that. The word of an Englishman and a gentleman. That's not good enough. And I'm afraid I have nothing more to tell you. And I seriously doubt if you have the power to extradite. I just want you to know that I'm going to stick with you. One of these times you're going to make a mistake, and when you do, I'm going to be there. Person to person from where? From who? I will certainly not accept the charges from England. All right, all right, all right. I'll put him off. Who's that? Who else? Chief, this is McLeod here. McLeod, what the devil are you doing calling me from London in the middle of the night? Well, it's daytime here. I'm on Bridges' trail. Now, he left all of a sudden, like, and I didn't have time to talk to you or I'd have lost him. McLeod, I want you on the next plane back to New York. Chief Bridges is my only hope of not only nailing whoever tried to kill Chris, but also the people that killed John Keaton and why. 
Now, I've got two weeks' leave coming, and I'm taking them. McLeod, I don't talk just for the pleasure of hearing my own voice. Now, Bridges is to be left alone. He's the key to the whole situation. But, Chief, this thing is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to find out everything you can on John Keaton. It might tell us why he was murdered. And also put a 24-hour guard on Chris at the hospital. Her life could still be in danger. McLeod, I absolutely forbid you. What did you say? I can't hear you. McLeod. We must have a bad... Chief, I'll call you back when I get a lead. McLeod! Poor baby. Shall I get you an aspirin? No, just bring me that bottle in the liquor cabinet marked McLeod. I have some idea. Just confirming we will be attending Lady Sinclair's party tonight after all. You must try and curb your enthusiasm. Yes, well, you've met Lady Sinclair. Miss, may I have a gin and tonic for the lady and I would like a oh, nice... I know, a martini, very dry. <laughs> oh, I did teach you well. Daddy, won't you tell me what really happened in Long Island? I had to read about it in the Times. Even Mother rang for Malta to see if you were still alive and paying alimony. Oh? I didn't think she'd be that concerned. Oh, she was. But so was I. Why would those men try and kill you? Oh, they were just laboring under the mistaken impression that I had a house full of paintings and a safe full of cash. <laughs> Foolish men. Luckily, the police arrived in time. It's all forgotten now. Is something wrong? No, 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 nothing. Shall I set these down, my lord? They're serving no purpose in your arms, Fletcher. Right on, my lord. Now, will uh, there be anything else? I think not. All right, I'll bring the car round in half an hour. Yes, do that, Fletcher. Oh, on second thought, I believe I'll drive the car myself tonight. Yourself, my lord. In that case, do exercise extreme caution. Why? The car, my lord. It's hired. Oh. In that case, you best drive, Fletcher. Or oh, better yet, come with us. Oh, perhaps Lady Sinclair will find you to be more a eligible companion. Lady Sinclair, my lord. Most kind of you. Treat it as an early Christmas gift, Fletcher. Thank you, my lord. Oh, Daddy, you do treat him shamefully. Oh, he thrives on it. We don't really have time for that. We're already late. Lady Sinclair, my dear, has waited for me for these past 20 years. Another few moments will only whet her appetite more. Well, perhaps, but you're taking me out tonight and we're going to be on time. Do hurry, please. Yes, dear, yes, dear. Thank you. Uh, I'll be ready in half an hour. Yes, that, that's fine, dear. Now we've got the shipment of explosives in from New York. All that we're going to need, for less than Keaton would have supplied it. 25 pounds of plastic explosives here. Time to detonate at exactly 4.30 p.m. And the rest, here. A delayed fuse, five minutes. I'll set that one myself. Good enough. Aye. 
But we need the original blueprints. To see if we're placing the explosives where Keaton would have suggested. And his lordship Bridges has got them all. Along with the photo and the list of names. If he hasn't handed them over to Scotland Yard. But the blueprints won't mean a thing to them. We'll get that film tonight. Ah, uh, good. Lord Bridges, I'm so delighted you could come. Oh, Lady Sinclair, it's entirely my pleasure. Well, I heard dreadful things about you in America. People with guns shooting at you or something. Oh, an incident forgotten now. Uh, oh. How exquisite. I'd say at least 90 diamonds. 104. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh, Charles, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Well, I your father. He's more interested in people. Oh, Daddy, you know James Rothwell, don't you? Yes, of course. I understand you're in quite a trip. I understand you've had another bomb threat in the house. It turned out to be a hoax. Probably planted by some backbenchers who didn't want to listen to the Foreign Secretary's speech on Rhodesia. I was up in the gallery. But the terrorist activities have increased in the last two weeks, have they not? Smoke without fire. Will you be voting on the Common Market Amendment? Abstaining. Don't like getting involved, do you, Charles? Depends on the cause. Ah, I see an old friend. Nice to see you again, Tracy. Don't let your father keep you locked away. You were awfully abrupt with him, weren't you? I have my reasons, my dear. Excuse me, love. Miss Bridges. Yes? My name is Matt Clayton. I'm a friend of your father's. We met in New York. Oh, he was just here with me. I'll see if I can find him for you. No, I really wanted to talk to you. What about? Your life. I tell you, Fletcher, one more evening like this, and... I must say, my lord, I was quite worried about you at the Keaton party. Since you had disappeared, I thought you might be the victim. Actually, my lord, you've been disappearing quite regularly from the parties we've been attending. Really? I hope you don't think I'm presumptuous, my lord, but... Is there anything you wish to tell me? No. Very good, my lord. Thank you. the second time you've saved my life, Marshal. I'd hate for this to become a habit. Feelings mutual. Let's get out. After you, Marshal. Daddy, won't you tell me what's been going on? My dear, I will as soon as I can. I promise. And you best get some rest. Good night. Good night, Marshal. Thank you. Good night. Can I offer you a drink, Marshal? No, thank you. I'm just interested in the truth. Oh, and what truth is that? You were in Keaton's bedroom the other night. You robbed Mrs. Keaton of her jewels, and then you put paste imitations in their place. I want to know what you did after that. I'm afraid we're dealing with something far more important and uncommon. What could be more important than murder? Mass murder. You better explain that to me. I'm not at liberty to do that, Marshal. You're not at liberty? 
Well, I'm going to tell you something. You better listen. I've got a girlfriend in New York City in a hospital whose life could depend on it. Your own daughter could have been killed tonight. How many more lives are you going to risk? Let me show you what Johnny Keaton was killed for. You've got no idea where that is. Not the slightest. But you do know who killed Keaton. Those are the men. Those two men there are the ones who tried to kill me in Long Island. I imagine they're here in London at this very moment. Clayton is the one who was holding my daughter tonight. Well, what makes you so sure that this is part of a, a terrorist group? Take a look, Marshal. That is Liam O'Brien, one of their leaders, responsible for some of the worst bomb disasters in this country. There has been what you police call an APB out on them for the, oh, the last few months, but the police can't find them. It was reported he'd gone back to Belfast. I'm convinced that he's here in London at this very moment. Well, what's Keaton's involvement in this, you know? Arms and explosives. Why'd you try and kill him? For that photograph and a list of names. I'm afraid poor Johnny wanted more than they were willing to give. Oh, Marshal, we've got to stop them. Well, I'd be happy to do that. I tell you, you testify against those killers in New York, and I'll do what I can to help you here. But you've got to realize what this is going to mean to you. We have a bargain, Marshal. Now I suspect all we need is a plan of action. Yeah, well, I've got a, a notion that might, might work, but we're going to need some outside help. Such as? Scotland Yard. Oh. Uh, Marshal, as one gentleman to another, uh, Perhaps you could refrain from mentioning to Scotland Yard how I happen to have found myself in Keaton's bedroom the night he was murdered. I mean, merely for the present, of course. Of course, yeah. Well, I think that uh, I could live with that. Oh. Marshal, I can't tell you how comfortable it is knowing you're on my side. There you go. Oh, yes. <laughs> Marshal. Hi, Inspector Craig. This is Detective Sergeant Evans. And this is... How are you? Inspector Phillips of the Sweeney. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sweeney? Yeah, Sweeney Todd, flying squad. Uh, cockney rhyming slang. And he handles the bombers. All right, Sergeant, get on the dog and bone. I want every copper in the bomb squad at this briefing. Go. All right, then. You better tell us what it's all about, eh? I will not accept the charges, McClough. Yes, Commissioner. No, no, I wasn't asleep. Uh, just resting my eyes, meditating, you know. Well, uh, what can I do for you, Commissioner? McLeod. Now, listen, Commissioner, I want to set the record straight. Whatever McLeod is doing in London has nothing to do with... Scotland Yard is... Thrilled with our cooperation, in this case. Biggest breakthrough they've had in years. Well, as I was saying, when I sent McLeod to London, didn't I mention that? Well, uh, I thought he was the man for the job. Oh, my God. I certainly do plan to follow up on it personally. Got my reservation right here. And I'm almost finished packing. I'll be on a plane commissioner to London in one hour. Now, don't you worry. We'll crack this one. Whatever it is. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate the thought. Oh, I certainly will pass it on to McLeod. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. You're going to London tonight. Didn't I mention that? McLeod, what are you doing to me now? Marshal, you are not my idea of a New York policeman. It was the whistle and flute that got me. Huh? 
He means the suit. And the cowboy tipped her. Well, I'm just kind of on loan to him. <laughs> you know, I still don't understand Lord Bridges' involvement in all well, this. Well, it came through a man named John Keaton. Now, Lord Bridges got the microfilm from him. But it wasn't until later that he got wind of what he'd lit into. And he's going to try and persuade O'Brien he's with them, is he? Yeah, and I wouldn't bet the homestead against him, either. He's just slicker than a grease shelf. Could talk the knobs right off the nickel-plated bedstead. You know what I mean? What's he talking about? Don't ask me. I don't understand a word he's saying. Bleeding foreigners. Charles Bridges here. I understand you want to meet with me, my lord. Take your car to Regent's Park. You walk through the zoo from the Avery side. Someone will meet you. You come with the coppers. And you and that lovely daughter of yours won't see tomorrow. I understand. Two of the conspirators killed John Keaton in New York. That's why I'm here. Yeah, we know that, love. How? Oh, McLeod. My morning wouldn't be complete unless I spent part of it with you. Chief, what are you doing here? I'm taking you back. Well, it's my bicentennial gift to England. Yes, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Inspector Craig, I'd like yeah. to introduce you to Chief Clifford. Hello, Chief. How are you? Nice to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, I must say, I've got to admire the way the marshal here has infiltrated this ring. We've been after O'Brien for about 18 months. Yeah, Marshal McLeod certainly is one of a kind. Yeah, well, come and have a butcher's at this. Huh? I think he means he wants us to look at something. Yeah. What you got for us, Andy? I've just been on the blood with Home Secretary and he's going potty. Well, nothing that fits. Now, this is the blueprint from the microfilm which Lord Bridges gave us. These crosses obviously designate the bomb placements. Now, these are the blueprints of the Houses of Parliament, Big Ben, the Tower of London, and Buckingham Palace. No relationship. We have more high angle elevations, but none of them match. In short, gentlemen, our information is that they plan to hit a prominent London site. But we cannot tell from this what their target is. Yeah, we had the information from an informer on Hell's Beat. All he said was it was definitely going to be a biggie. Maybe three bombs in possibly two or three different places. And they're going off today. Yeah, you know, I don't think there's any doubt about it that O'Brien's behind this lot. And we're talking about a lot of lives, if Bridges fails. The government has squeezed every farthing they can out of me and are now trying to appropriate my land. That is why I was forced to become a thief, albeit not a common one. I'm only interested in acquiring enough money to purchase a chateau in a quiet corner of France and enjoy a bottle of Nuit saint George in the company of those I care about. 50,000 pounds for that film. And do we have a bargain or not? There's a warehouse in Whitechapel near the docks in the Clancy Street. Be there at four o'clock. Your money will be waiting. Naturally, the part about my being a thief is highly imaginative. Just a bit of colour added to the credence of my story. Yeah, well, what do you think, Andy? Well, it's the best chance we've got. Unless I can come up with a positive fix on those locations. I need 30 men at the garage. Can you issue a special firearms order? Semi-automatic rifles, 38 pistols, eh? Good enough. All right, gentlemen, well, thank you very much for your assistance. We can take it from here, I think. You can wait in the conference room, eh? All right. Thank you. We gonna get aced out, Chief? Well, it is their country, McLeod. I don't think we have much choice. They'll get Garland Clayton for us. You and I, Lord Bridges, are gonna have to have a talk about your return to New York to testify. Hopefully, we'll have Garland and Clayton on that plane with us tomorrow morning. Yes, I understand that. I wonder if we could postpone that little chat till tonight. I have to attend the Queen's Garden Party at Buckingham Palace. I do every year, purely for my daughter's sake. Strange thing, she seems to enjoy meeting all the people I enjoy avoiding. Here's my left. We'll talk tonight. Pretty good. Oh, Andy. Everybody's in position. I've got a bloke at the corner near the pub. You know, I only hope they don't fancy a pint of pig's ear. They can smell a copper a mile off. Well, if they're coming, they won't be stopping. That's true. 
crowds now really beginning to gather as Her Majesty the Queen steps out to greet her guests. This is the one day in the year, of course, that commoners are allowed in the grounds of Buckingham Palace. Oh, there's Lord Charles Bridges and his lovely daughter Tracy. Lord Bridges, of course, having just returned from the Operator, United I'd States, like to make a long-distance oh, telephone you know, call to New York However, City. The name is relaxed. Chris Kaufman. This is person to person. She's in Bellevue Hospital. In my regards. There are a number of familiar figures. Maxwell Smith, MP for Kingsley West, his wife Joanna. Will you stop that pacing? You're wearing out the carpet. And my nerves. Well, I'll tell you something, Chief. This whole situation is just a bubble off a plum as far as I'm concerned. You know, Bridges was taking a chance. And they played into his hands just a little bit too quick to suit me. I've already told you it's their ballpark. There is nothing Hello? we can do. Hello? Chris, is that you? Sam, is that you? Hey. How are you doing? Much better. They think I can go home tomorrow. What's happening in London? Well, it's just a little bit hard to explain to you from this distance, but I can tell you one thing. The trail's getting hotter. Now, you just, you take care of yourself. And uh, you keep that police car with you, you understand, until I get back there. Is Charles all right? Oh, listen, he turned out to be a real jewel. He put his life and his reputation right on the line. Chancellor of the Exchequer. Many Commonwealth countries represented here today. Sam? Sam! Sam, where are you? Chris, Chris, hold on a minute. Just hold on a second. I see over there is the secretary of the Garnet Institute. That's it. Rather well known to all of you. That's it! Chief, that's it! What are you talking about? That's where the bombs are located. Look at this. You see those tables? The round circles. You see the square tables? The rectangles. You see that? You get a hold of Craig at the warehouse and tell him to get over to Buckingham Palace as soon as you can. Bring the bomb squad with him. Where are you going? Buckingham Palace! Afternoon, sir. Please drive on through. People are asking for you over there. Everything. We're all set up. I understand the Conservatives are grooming a young lad to uh, run against Adrian West in the by-elections. <laughs> Fools will never pull it off. <laughs> West will be sitting in that front bench when Manny Shinwell is celebrating his 90th. Let's not talk about politics. 
Of course. I'm sorry, dear. You're all right. I guess I'm just a bit shaken up from last night. Now that I've got you all to myself for a minute, will you keep your promise and tell me? Tracy, get out of here at once. I want you to go to the front gate and tell the police to bring the bomb squad here as fast as they can to evacuate everyone from the ground with the least possible panic. But Just what? hurry, hurry. Bridges has seen Garland. We've got to get out of here. We've only got five minutes. Officer! Sorry, sir. No one beyond this point. Look, I'm working I'm with the sure CID. Her Majesty will invite you next. There's day, a sir. bomb planted on the ground. It Sergeant, could go off any Sergeant, minute. Let that cowboy go through. He's working with us. And look, get this crowd cleared. There's been a bomb threat. Don't let him panic, right? right get sir. rid of him. That's one of them! That's one of them! Pardon me, lady, this is a police emergency. I've got to borrow your car. Ladies and gentlemen, disperse, disperse. There may be a bomb on the ground. Please disperse quietly and in order. So come along, ladies, please. Thanks, my lord. We'll take you from here. Get moving. Very good. Cartwright, we don't have time to detonate it. I'll have to disconnect it. Hand me the covers. Quickly. Okay, boys, take it away. It's not worth a firework on Guy Fawkes night. Andy, he's found another one up there. Bet it's just disarmament. He says there's only 50 seconds left on it. Well, they were cutting a bit fine. Well, they can get away in a crowd like this, can't they? A Majesty? Yeah, she's all right. She's in the palace, thank goodness. Come on, let's check the gate. Well, we're going to clear the area for a thousand yards. There's a third bomb somewhere. I don't know if Brian knows where it is. We spotted him, but he got away. Where's McLeod? Well, he's gone after him, isn't he? Again, eh? I have to check a few things out. All right, mate. You know where the man went that was driving this convertible? The maintenance man, sir? He went up into the clock tower. That was no maintenance man, that was Liam O'Brien. Yeah, yeah, well, you can't go in there, sir. He's planting a bomb up there. Have you uh, any identification? I don't have time. Hey, you can't go in there. Come back here, come back.
some bloke dressed like a cowboy went up into the cop car. Shots were fired down at us or we'd have brought him out, so I put a call through to the yard for reinforcements. Well, there's a bomb up there. You'd better evacuate the area. I'm going up. No, I'm sorry, Chief. You can't do that. The cloud's up there. Yeah. Well, he's on his own now, isn't he? <laughs> See me, Chief? Yeah, come in, McLeod. Got a friend here. Oh. How are you, Marshal? What are you doing in this neck of the woods? Well, I just thought I'd take a bit of a holiday. Get away from the trouble and strife for a while. Trouble and, uh... The wife. Also, I thought you might like to know. We got all the bombers. Well, how did they get on to the palace grounds? James Rothwell, the young Earl. Sympathizer. We got him as well. How about Lord Bridges? Oh, he just flew in this morning. And he's going to testify against Garland and Clayton as a witness to John Keaton's murder. There you go. Yeah, it seems the first thing he did when he got here was pay a visit to Mrs. Keaton. You know, see if there was anything he could do to help. Yeah. So I decided to have our uh, expert re-examine those jewels in her safe again. You know, they turned out to be real. Every last one of them. Really? He doesn't know how he could have made the mistake. Well, I guess we can't prosecute a Lord of the Realm, then. Well, not unless he goes to another Long Island party. Marshal. I've been asked to deliver this to you by hand. Oh, really? Yeah. No, no, it's all right. Her Majesty. She wishes to express her gratitude to you for all your efforts. Her Majesty? Of course, it won't stop the bombers. But at least a lot of lives were saved that Saturday afternoon. <laughs> she realises, of course, that you normally wear a Stetson, but she thinks that might come in useful at some formal occasion. Well, I... <laughs> I would certainly like the opportunity to thank Her Majesty sometime. Any time, Marshal. You're welcome in our country. Any time you can get away. Well, that won't be for quite a while, I'm afraid. He starts traffic duty tomorrow morning. Well, I don't know. I think I might find some, uh, some occasion to wear it. Mm -hmm. 